Hi, so I'm here to talk to you today about the social cognitive theory, which comes from Albert Bandura. Uh, basically, the social cognitive theory describes how beliefs, self-perceptions, expectations, and the observation of others work together to uh, affect our, form, our performance. And while studying this theory, I was watching the movie uh, The Ides of March, and I saw a lot of this theory in that movie. So I am going to actually go through the movie and some of the subplots and some of the characters and explain how um, Stephen, the main character, was able to um, learn from some of his models in the social cognitive theory methods. So I'm going to show you a quick, quick two-minute um, preview of the movie so you can kind of see what characters are like and kind of see an overview of the plot. And if you... In, and I might have to, in the analysis of this, ruin the movie for some of you who haven't seen it, so I'm sorry, but if this is your spoiler alert, if you don't want me to ruin the movie, then don't watch the rest of this presentation. But if you do, then, you know, if you want to see how I do it, then keep going. You okay? We're gonna be fine. We have to do it. It's the right thing to do, and nothing bad happens when you're doing the right thing. Is this your personal theory? Because I can shoot holes in it. Well, there's exceptions to every rule. Who is this? Tom Duffy. You got a couple of minutes? I'd like to sit down with you. I can't be talking to you. You got something the other guys don't have. You exude something. You draw people in. You're the big man on campus. I'm just a lowly intern. What time you got to work tomorrow? 9 a.m. I thought I was being smooth and subtle. No, you're pretty forward. You have an idea at a tight no, time. No, not a clue. Hey, you got the best media mind in the country. All the reporters love you. If your boy wins, you get a job in the White House. He loses, you're back at a consulting firm. I've worked on more campaigns than most people have. By the time they're 40, he's the only one that's going to actually make a difference in people's lives. Either we're going to lead the world, or we are going to bury our heads in the sand. You're my brain trust. So how are we doing? What do you think, Stevie? I think it's ours to the taking. You are working for the wrong man. I want you to work for us. Paul's my friend. Well, there's only one thing I value in this world, and that's loyalty. Without it, you are nothing. You want to work for the friend, or do you want to work for the president? I don't have to play dirty anymore. I got Morris. Today marks the beginning of a fight between two sets of ideals. If you get Thompson's endorsement, the race is over. What does he want? Cabinet post. I'm never going to do it. I said I wasn't going to make those kind of deals. Paul, I met with Tom Duffy yesterday. What? I just didn't think he was well, It doesn't matter what you thought. It matters what you did. It matters what you didn't do. I'm in. I'm coming to work for you. Revenge makes people unpredictable. We can't have that. What if I had something else? Like what? Something big. story getting out. Dignity matters. You were off the campaign, but you thought it was important to fix things. Integrity matters. Our future depends on it. Steven, don't do this. I'll do or say anything if I believe in it, but I have to believe in the cause. So now you can see that we have a lot of tetriarchal reciprocal causality going along between the characters and the plot. There's a lot that's happening. Um, there's the environment of the actual campaign and the competing campaign and the, those social influences that make it difficult or easy to perform. Then there's also the behaviors or the achievement outcomes of each individual and there's also the personal variables of each individual that are all affecting each other and creating an, an environment or you know also making a, a difficult environment to produce in but they're still making it work. So that's one aspect of the, con the social cognitive theory that's being addressed. Another, uh, the one that I mainly want to talk about is observational learning and especially how Stephen is able to uh, work with the other characters and how he observes them and how he learns from them. So first I'm going to talk about Steven's attention. He was definitely uh, had the attention of the of what was going on. He was definitely focused. He was this was something that he really cared about so it was easy for him to keep his attention. It was also easy for him to retain the information because he's more cognitively development developed and he's also willing to um, work with the others and he's just willing to hear everything that they have to say and retain it. He's also capable of going through the production phase of this observational learning. He's able to hear what they have to say. He's able to reproduce similar actions and to work on his own because he's a fully functioning adult. 
And of course, his motivation and reinforcement are very high. He is very motivated because being a campaign manager is something that he cares about, so he's really going to listen to the models of the other two campaign managers to work together to get there. So let me talk about how he works with those other monitors and, um, and how that observational learning happens. So some of the factors of, that affect the observational learning are first, of course, modeling. He is being modeled by both Paul and by Tom. And both of them are working together to kind of influence him. So in the movie, Tom tries to convince him to come work for them instead of work for Paul. And Tom is kind of the bad guy because he creates this big plot. And then in the end of the movie, spoiler alert, in the end of the movie, he, Tom and um, Stephen talk together. And Stephen comes walks right into his office and he tells him that I want to work for you now because the other campaign's falling apart. And he says to him, no, I don't think, you know, now that you want to quit because you got fired, I just don't think that's a good idea and I don't really want to work for you. And he realizes that he never had the intention of hiring him and that the only reason why he, you know, said that he wanted to hire him was because he wanted to create confusion in the campaign and wanted him to, you know, consider the other side and consider giving up. And so in the end, he realizes that his model, even though it was awful and it was dirty and crooked, it was effective in getting his campaign to fall apart. So he realized that even though his competitor was using tactics that, and strategies that he would not have absorbed usually, he really liked, uh, or he was able to achieve the outcomes, which has to do with some of these factors some more. So, of course, um, Stephen's developmental uh, status was very high. He was very able to cognitively process and create strategies and to make his own decisions and to move forward. So his developmental status was very high. And the model competence and and prestige was very high. Tom and Paul were both very prestigious campaign managers, so he was very willing to listen to their models. Um, outcome expectations. Steve saw that once Tom had achieved the desired outcome to create confusion in his campaign, he was much more willing to do something to get his job back. He, what he learned became uh, clear by the pressure that was created from this interaction. So as he saw that playing dirty was able to get him the desired outcomes, he was more willing to play dirty to get what he wanted in the end. Um, vicarious consequences were also a major part of this. When he saw that Tom was able to get the consequences he wanted, the, the desired results, and that they were working for him, he was also more willing. So Stephen also was willing to do some goal setting. He was able to see his own goals. He was able to do his own, to reach his own objectives based on um, his cognitive models. And of course, Stephen's self-efficacy was very high. He really believed that he could do the job. When he went in to confront Tom, and when he also went in to confront Morris at the very end about what he had done, he showed no fear. He showed no doubt. He definitely was competent, and he believed that he could do the job. He also believed that he could do Paul's job really well, which is why he asked for it in the end. So in so um, basically, he learned from the models of Tom and Paul that playing dirty is part of politics, and he was able to embrace that and become part of the political scheme and move forward. So um, he was definitely absorbed in observational learning. So I also want to talk about how um, vicarious reinforcement is shown in the movie. If you look at the character Morris, he had of course been um, vicariously reinforced by what what had happened what has happened to other politicians in the few, in the past. So because other politicians have been public publicly punished or publicly humiliated because of having sexual relationships with their interns, um, Morris was knew that if that came out, if that story came out, that he would be ruined. So his vicarious reinforcement was very strong. He really knew that there that other politicians um, would you know, had been through that and he knew that he would go through it if he had the same feel, if he had the same experience. So his re vicarious reinforcement was very strong. So in the movie, Stephen has um, some self-reinforcement going on. He doesn't do a lot of self-reinforcement because he's very disciplined, but when he does reinforce himself for a good job, then, you know, he works forward. So one of the reinforcement you see in the evening that he spends with um, our lovely Molly. Um, he spends time with Molly in the in the bar, and he kind of gets to know her after a good day's work. So he knows how to reinforce himself positively for good work, and he also knows how to you know take himself away from situations that are bad. So 
and also just to like negative, you know, kind of do some negative reinforcement, re remove those behaviors. When he found out that she had actually had an affair with Morris, then he was, you know, willing to send her away because that would ruin the campaign and he just didn't want her to be involved and to be around. So he knew how to reinforce himself for good behavior, good rewards, and he also knew how to take, to minimize situations to avoid negative consequences. Um, and that's all part of self-management and so Stephen was able to set his old his own goals and and take control of his own learning and that's what sh is shown at the end of the movie when he confronts Morris he's fully learned um, from the examples of others and from his own experiences and he's done his own self-education and that's what makes him a strong competitor and what makes him capable of taking over Paul's job at the end so of course this all comes together to show that um, Stephen was very good at self-regulated learning. He was capable of doing his own goal setting, his own achievement, and he knew when he was learning when he wasn't. So he was able to take the whole campaign and learn a lot from it and change his behaviors to match what was necessary to succeed in that environment and with those people. He also had a strong sense of human agency in his capacity to um, to coordinate his own learning skills and to do his own motivation and, and to harness his own emotions and that's shown throughout the the film you know he doesn't really let his feelings for molly stop him from doing what he feels like is right and and moving forward so even though he doesn't necessarily show much emotion to her he is he's honoring his own human agency and regulating his emotions so that he can learn from the situation so overall, I would say that Stephen is a perfect example of someone who engages in cognitive, social cognitive um, learning and has basically learned how to observe others and to become more of a, a success. So his interactions with other people has really, has really influenced, them, has really influenced. And of course, I would say that his live model is people like Paul and Tom and maybe even Morris because they're in his realm, they're in his environment and they're affecting him directly. But um, for me, of course, this he is a symbolic model. So if I was a campaign manager, then Steve would buy, be my symbolic mo model because he's a fictional character and he's not someone who's real and interacting with me in my life. So that's the difference between live models and symbolic models. And that's the end of my overview of how the movie The Ides of March shows observational learning and social cognitive theory inside the movie. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I'd love to get your feedback.